What it is, my people, it's the Kid Sincere, your resident gold chain gamer. And six months ago, I want to say exactly, I bought the Astro C40. This is Astro's entry into the Elite Controller market right alongside the Xbox Elite Controller and the Scuff Vantage. So six months ago, I picked this controller up and I've been playing with it, pause, exclusively gaming on PC and PS4. So a lot of comments in the video that you can see somewhere up there were, how do you feel about it now, Sin? Do you still like the controller? Do you still use the controller? And I'm gonna talk about that today because I have been using this, I'm talking about any game I played on PC, I've used the Astro C40 and on PS4. Now, of course, on Xbox, I gotta use an Xbox controller, so I'm not talking about that platform, but on PS4 and PC, I've only been using the Astro C40 for six months. So how do I feel about it? Do I still think that it's a good controller? Is it still worth $200, to be honest with you? None of these controllers might be worth $200, but if that's what you're gonna do, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. First, let's start off with the things I like, and one of the things I like now is something that I disliked when I first reviewed the controller, and that's the build. It wasn't that the build was bad, it's just that this is a bulky, ass controller i'm talking about it's still very very large in my hands another pause but i've gotten used to it i know people had funny ass comments about my hands being small but after playing with this controller for six months it just feels normal now in fact when i go back to a smaller controller that's where it feels weird at because i'm so used to the width and the size of this controller. So the form factor and the size is a plus. And of course you can change the modules around if you wanna play offset or diagonal to each other. Either way, it feels good in the hands. Another good thing and probably the selling point of the Astro C40 is the customization and not just the moving around of the joysticks. I'm talking about even in app, when you're adjusting the button layout the trigger sensitivity and all of those things, the customization for this controller is off the hook because one of the things that I like to customize now that I use this controller is the sound. The sound that comes out of this controller when you plug your headphones in it is marvelous. Even when you're using a microphone, you can hear your playback of your voice inside your earphones so you're not screaming at the person on the other end. And that's dope. They do have that on Xbox, but not on PS4, but this controller makes it possible. So the sound quality that comes out of this controller is top notch. The fact that you can use this wireless or wired for extra response time is also a plus, but that's something that's being done with all controllers nowadays. And you wanna get the least amount of response time between your input and what's happening on the screen as possible. So this controller really does achieve that. Now let's get into the interesting part of the conversation. And that's the cons. What didn't I like about the controller? One of the things I complained about in the original review and I'm gonna complain about as long as I play with this controller is the fact that I can't power on the console with it. I literally have to bend my lazy ass over, pause, to turn on the console and not turn it on on my controller, which is something I can do with the original PS4 controller, it's kind of a letdown because, yeah, we're all lazy ass gamers and we wanna just turn the console on with a button press that's on our controller. It's one of the things we like about next gen or this current gen, and it's not a feature for a $200 controller. So yes, I'm gonna complain about that forever. Also, the lack of four paddles, which I've honestly, have gotten used to, but there's still something inside of me that would love to have two extra paddles. Also because the placement of these paddles are great. Well, these aren't paddles, these are buttons, but the placement of it is awesome. So having two more would have been perfect. This controller could have been perfect, but they didn't add the two extra paddles to what they already have. So that takes some points off, but still, the two paddles on here work just fine if you're playing a first person shooter, an RPG, or whatever the hell it is you're gonna play with this controller because I've played 
every type of game with this controller, whether it was Sekiro Shadows Died Twice, Rage 2, Madden NFL 20, NBA 2K20. I played an array of games with this controller and it worked perfectly with every one of them. Now, this is the biggest offense I've experienced with this controller. And I want to say that maybe this was done intentionally. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get into it. The joysticks. Now, a lot of people think the joysticks are loose. I don't think these joysticks are any looser than the joysticks that come with your PS4. No, no, no. But these deteriorate pretty quickly. Now, I play a lot of NBA 2K. That means I have to use my left stick a lot to move my character around the court. I ran into an issue where my left joystick felt like it was grinding against something on the inside of the stick. I didn't know what it was. I thought maybe I had the module in wrong or something like that, but it wasn't that. My module was actually going bad. Yup, it wasn't working properly anymore and I only had this controller for six months. I did play a lot of games with it, but six months later, I shouldn't have to consider getting a new module, which you can buy from their website, which makes me think the conspiracies are rolling through my head. Did they make these joysticks with a lesser quality so you can buy more modules from them? Because when I went to the site to see if they had modules for sale, guess what? They were on back order. They were on back order, which means a lot of people were buying spare or extra or replacement modules from Astro. Did they make these of cheap quality so you can keep buying them? Something is telling me that they did. Something is telling me that this is intentional. Maybe I'm just a conspiracy theorist and this isn't right and it's something that I did on my part. You'll never know. But for what I know and see with this back ordered joystick module is that maybe y'all could increase the quality of these instead of, I don't know, putting things in the controller that's not really necessary. And that's that's kind of what I feel about these joysticks is that this was done intentionally so you can buy joystick modules from them. Maybe I'm wrong, Astro, if you see this video, reach out to the kid and let me know what's going on. And yes, I need a new left stick module, so help a brother out. But outside of that, it's a pretty decent controller. I like it better than the Scuff Vantage over time. The Scuff Vantage has some weird stuff going on with it, but ultimately it's not up there with the Xbox Elite Controller Volume 1. And my AIM controller that I got from AIM is just fantastic. That's still the best controller that I own on PlayStation. So the Astro did not dethrone that. So now the question is, is it worth the money? This retails for $199.99. Should you buy this controller? Now that's up to you. Do you want to swap modules and the placement and have offset and diagonal joysticks? Well, if that's the case, yeah, it's the controller to get because you can do all those things. There is really good quality as far as the button presses. They feel like mouse clicks. The triggers feel great. The trigger stops, awesome. All of those things function well. The D-pad, the D-pad is great. It's one of the better D-pads on the controller. So it's a good controller. It feels quality. It's just these joysticks. I was very disappointed that six months later, I'm considering buying a new module for a joystick because I wore it out. I don't think six months is a, enough time to wear out a joystick. I did play the games a lot. I was on the games a whole lot with the Astro C40. Still, six months just doesn't seem like enough time to spend $20 on the extra module. So is it worth 200 bucks? I'm gonna say, hmm, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. I don't think that this controller is worth $200 with these module problems. I think if you spend that kind of money on a controller, you shouldn't worry about anything going on with it for at least a year, one year. Now, excessive use over a year, shit happens all the time. It's just something you can't avoid. Six months feels like a ploy to get more money out of the consumer don't like those practices, gotta make these with better quality and you'll have yourself a classic controller. 
like the Xbox Elite controller. People have had problems with those controllers too, so no one's out the water. Now the question is, do you have the Astro C40 or were you looking to buy one? Whatever it is, leave a comment, let me know what you think about it. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you think a friend would like this video, hit the share button. And if you like all of this, subscribe to the channel for more content. Check me out on Twitter at Sincere underscore GCG and on Instagram and Facebook at Gold Chain Gamers. In the meantime, between time, I'm not saying that it's a bad controller, but for 200 bucks, you have to question everything. That's as much as a console. And with these kind of joysticks, can't recommend it. So y'all stay cool while y'all stay cool. And remember, it's more than a game. It's a lifestyle, y'all. I'm up out of here. Peace. Wait, you still here? Well, since you're here, subscribe to the channel or check out my last video. Either way, thanks for watching and cheers, I guess. Now, how do I take over the world? Step one.